Welcome back YouTube community. This is 53 Nod. In this video, we'll be talking about the design of filters using post zero placement method. So let's get started. So this is the outline of the presentation. We'll begin with the introduction to the filters. This will be followed by designing filters using post zero placement method, followed by application of the filter in the removal of baseline wonder component from PPG signal using a high pass filter and followed by calculating the root mean square error and SNR of the signal. And finally, we would end with the analysis of the results. So let's get started with the introduction to filters. In signal processing, basically a filter is a device or a process that removes some unwanted components or features from a signal. Uh, the defining feature of filter or the basic attribute of filter is the complete or partial suppression of some as aspects of signal. Uh, in digital signal processing, this means basically removing some frequencies or frequency bands. So filters are widely used in many places like electronics, telecommunication, radio, television, etc. And there are many different ways of classifying filters and there is no simple hierarchical classification. So as you can see here, uh, the ideal filter magnitude responses of various filters are presented here. Uh, the low pass filter basically has a cutoff frequency and allows all the frequency components lesser than that cutoff frequency. There is a very sharp transition here uh, at the cutoff frequency, or you can say in an ideal low pass filter, there is a discontinuity at the cutoff frequency. Now, moving on to high pass filter, high pass filter allows all the frequencies, all the frequency components after the cutoff frequency. Similarly, a band pass filter allows a certain frequency band and a band stop filter or band reject filter stops a certain frequency band. Uh, we have another type of filter called all pass filter, which basically allows all the frequency components. So uh, moving on, uh, we'll look at the design of filters using pole zero placement method. Uh, there are many ways of designing filters. So in this video, we'll be talking about pole zero placement method and how it is how we use it to design filters. Every, as you all know, every digital filter can be specified by its poles and zeros, of course, with a gain factor by using its transfer functions. Poles and zeros give very useful insights into the filter's magnitude and phase response, and thus are the basis for the uh, design of digital filter. So, a typical transfer function can be written in this form where uh, I I have my filter has m zeros and n poles and these are the individual gains beta 1 up to beta m are the individual gains of the zeros and a1 to a n are the gains of uh, the z poles. So it can be further simplified in this form where I have m poles and n zeros and assume that there are they don't cancel each other and they are distinct. So I can write my filter in this form. I can write the transfer function in this form. Uh, and substituting substituting z equals e power j omega t, we get the frequency response. Uh, substituting z equals e power j omega t, we get the frequency response. Uh, as you can see, this is the frequency response of the filter. We can further simplify it. And at the end, what we get is gain into this expression. So this gives me the frequency magnitude response. Uh, the magnitude of this gives me the magnitude. This is basically the magnitude response. And we can also get the phase response by simplifying this expression. So these are the various plots. As you can see, uh, there is a zero at one point near the unit circle. Suppose that point corresponds to, let us assume that 0.3 or something. So as you can see, in the normalized frequency spectrum, there is zero, mag uh, zero amplification or gain, you can say, at that point. So, but the problem by putting only one zero is that we'll get uh, complex coefficients in the differential, difference equation. So we go for its complex conjugate also, so that uh, we get a real equation at the end. Uh, and we all know that in a in digital frequency, my omega varies from minus pi to pi and it's periodic after that. Uh, that is, after pi, again, it starts 
from minus pi again that repeats my period is my omega varies from minus pi to pi in digital domain so now if i put a pole inside the unit circle inside the unit circle because my uh, filter should be stable at these two points i would get a high pass filter because uh, what the pole does is it ma amplifies the magnitude right so now uh, if i put poles at the same place where i put zeros i would get a maximum gain at that point because what poles do they amplify or they increase the gain at that point so we have two properties here if i place a zero my magnitude at that point will become zero if i place a pole it ideally should tend to infinity so we use these two properties and if we place a pole and zero together uh, then these two try to cut off each other's uh, if we place a pole and zero near to each other these two try to curb each other's action right so and we need to play with play, the placements of poles and zeros in order to get the most ideal response now if i have to remove only one frequency component corresponding to this point this is one of the best positions because of placement of poles and zeros because my magnitude response is very sharp the transition period is very low and the transition is very fast so this is what i look for and now uh, since the theory is done we we'll look on, look at how we implement this on arduino and matlab so x here is my input data it is a clean ppg signal first we'll implement our filter on the clean signal and check whether we get the same clean signal after implementing this uh, filter uh, followed by this we'll uh, apply the same uh, we'll apply the filter on a uh, noise cppg signal and try to remove the baseline wander component okay baseline wander components frequency doesn't exceed 0.4 hertz so we design a high pass filter whose cut off frequency is 0.4 hertz so it does so that it allows all the frequency components after 0.4 hertz so as you can see x is my input here uh, these are the, uh, all the variables that i'll be requiring so uh, initially we set the baud rate to 9600 uh, y of n is my filtered output so what we do is uh, we uh, we we write the transfer function uh, on the basis of the poles and zeros that we put we take we take the inverse z transform get the difference equation and that difference equation is the same one we substitute the difference equation here we don't compute the inverse laplace transform on arduino we do that on pen and paper and the final result or the equation will be substituted here uh, because that makes my life easier so let's check out the our input and followed by the filter out as you can see the red signal is my input signal and the blue signal is my filtered output uh, as you can see it is almost the same there is no much significant difference because even the input signal is also clean now let us apply this on uh, a noisy ppg signal as you can see uh, the input signal is filled with noise components uh, these are uh, although the high frequency noise components are not uh, removed in this since it's a high pass filter we can see that the this output signal is straight in this domain whereas the input signal has a baseline drift component which we are removing through this filter so now let us calculate the root mean square error and uh, the center of the signal as you can see the root mean square is 0.28 and the snr is 20.79 hence uh, we have calculated uh, the root mean square error of this noisy ppj signal after passing through a filter we have calculated the snr of the signal and we have also seen how we have to design a filter now let us what we'll do in matlab is uh, we'll take the input of a clean ppj signal we ourselves will add noise to it Uh, here our noise is baseline 
wander component. We'll use the sinusoidal signal for that with frequency of 0.1 hertz, 0.2 hertz, and 0.25 hertz. We'll sum these three up and we'll add this to our clean PPG signal and pass this to our filtered out through our filter so that we can uh, and check if we get back our clean signal or not. So, and at the same time, calculate root mean square error and also the SNR of the signal. So that is what we are doing. Sampling rate is 80 Hertz. Frequency one is 0.1 Hertz. Frequency of first baseline with components. Second is 0.2, third is 0.25. So we are taking 800 samples. These are the baseline signals. We are adding them with uh, gain of 0 0.03 because baseline components gain is not very high. And we are plotting the same. Followed by, we will be applying finding out root mean square error and SNR of the signal. Uh, as you all can see, these are my three uh, baseline wander components, which I'll sum up and add to my original signal. So this is my, uh, this is my sig noisy signal with baseline lift component added. Uh, these three are my noisy signals. And this is my filtered signal. As you all can see, there is a small baseline drift component here or it's a small sinusoidal, which is, which varies, which is varying here, which is basically my baseline drift component. And you can check in the filter output that, uh, it is almost a straight line down and there is, which proves that there is no baseline drift component here. Even if we subtract these two, if we subtract original signal from the filtered output, uh, the error is quite low. I'm telling this because my RMSC here is very small. RMSC 1 is 0 0.0712, RMSC 2 is 0 0.0715, RMSC 3 is root mean square of 3 is 0 0.072, which is quite low. And SNR is close to 3. So this proves that we can efficiently build our filters using pole zero placement method. Hope you liked this video and my explanation. Do subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more interesting videos. Thank you.